Under the current rules, does it evaporate? Does the system evaporate again at the end of 2012? No, good question, Arthur. It goes back to the old law, the million dollars again. So we'd be right back where we were in December. So you can think that maybe in two Decembers, we might be looking at, at the same problem. See, they do this so that we'll have like kind of a permanent seminar every December. Right, so you can kind of like, this is what happened this year. Right? Yeah, the annuity for attorneys and estate planners. Okay. So what's the bad part about all of this? Well, first of all, just as we said, it's the uncertainty of not knowing what the federal government's going to do. And then there's the issue of Massachusetts that still has an estate tax. And that level that you're looking at is still a million dollars. Oh, and the other thing, when uh, the federal goes back to the million dollars, right now it's a 35% tax bracket. It would go back to somewhere between 35 and 55 percent. So if it goes back to the old law, it's definitely going to hit a lot of people. One thing to keep in mind if you're doing estate tax planning is the gift tax. Massachusetts doesn't have a gift tax, so it, um, it actually makes some planning in Massachusetts um, more appealing than in other states. On the federal level, you can give up to $13,000 to anyone you want to. It does not have to be a relative. It could be everybody in this room you could give $13,000 to and not even have to file a gift tax return to report it. If you want to give more than that to one person, then you have this year and next year $5 million you can use up going forward. So if you gave $100,000 to somebody, you'd still have 87, you'd have 87,000 that you would apply against your $5 million. That number also goes back to a million um, in, in two years from now. By the way, I just, just, just to spend a couple more minutes on this, this is probably the most, one of the most common questions that, some, that people will ask. Well, can't they had this kind of number in their back of their heads. Can I give away, like, and it was, used to be $10,000 for a long time, and then it slowly grew. Can I give away something tax-free? And the answer is, like, yes. But it's really a really big number. No, they said, no, it's like ten or $11,000. I said, no, it's really a big number. And the reason is, is this. Remember, this is a combined estate and gift tax system. If you're, if you're giving away $13,000 or less, you don't, as Janet says, you don't even have to file a tax return. If you're giving away more than that, then the little bit that you're, or not the little bit, you could be giving, say you're giving $113,000 away instead of $13,000 to one person in one year. The extra $100,000, you don't pay a tax on that. It's just, it now gets subtracted from that $5 million pile that you can give away after you die. So in other words, if you're in a situation at least currently where you have less than $5 million, as far as the federal tax system is concerned, you can give it all away. And you can for give, mass, you can give it all away, too. Except for that one wrinkle that you taught me, about what happens when you file your, your well, estate, we'll, which you're going to we'll get to that. get to that. But just remember that broadly, that there, isn't, there is not a, you know, if you want to give a lot of money away to your kids, probably you just can. You can just write them big checks, right? Now, you know, does that... And by the way, that's completely separate from the mass health rules, from any of the nursing home rules. But for tax purposes, that's the case, okay? It always surprises people when we say this. Janet. Another surprise sometimes to people is that any transfers between spouses is also a tax-free um, gift. So you can transfer things back and forth between um, your husband or your wife. You don't have to report it. And um, a lot of times that's helpful to do to um, equalize estates. And we'll talk about um, a certain kind of trust 
in a few minutes, but um, that's um, something else to keep in mind. If you happen to be a non-citizen uh, non resident, those numbers might be um, a little bit different. They'd be lower. But for most people um, that are citizens of the United States, then you can do this type of planning. And another thing to remember is that for these two years, you have portability, which again is the ability for both spouses to use the combined rate of $10 million. Now we're going to get into something that most people have a really hard time understanding. And that's really important. And it's really important. We've said that Massachusetts looks to see whether you're above or below a million. And I specifically didn't say that Massachusetts has an exemption amount of a million dollars because it does not. It has a threshold amount of a million dollars. And what that means is if you have an estate of $999,000, you don't even have to file a return. You don't pay a tax. You don't worry about it. If you have an estate of a million, one dollar, you technically have to file a return. And we'll show you in a slide coming up that there is a significant tax impact to that. For Massachusetts, there's a chart, and it's in the back of your materials if you want to look at it later on, that shows you the state death tax credit and how it's calculated. And basically, the Massachusetts tax is somewhere between 1% and 16%, and it can go all the way up to $10 million plus. I would ask Janet to put that chart in the back, just so that you can understand why you'll never figure it out. I mean, <laughs> the, chart, the chart's just great. <laughs> it's great. Continue. <coughs> So we're going to try to bring this home with an example. And Frank and Mary are Arthur's favorite people to use. You'll, you'll get used to Frank and Mary going forward. Um, he it's, just, it's just I found from doing this, Frank and Mary just remind people of a lot of people, right? Frank and Mary have the kind of asset structure that just a whole lot of folks have. We, we modified their assets a little bit for today because we wanted to make sure that they had some taxable income. But. Right. So here we have husband and wife with various assets. They have a house, a vacation home, CDs, mutual funds, 401k, and IRA. And you can see that all of this adds up to an estate of 1,150,000. So obviously we picked that for a reason. It's not going to cause any federal estate tax issues, but it is over a million dollars to show you how the mass threshold works. So if Frank dies and he gives the entire estate to Mary, there's no estate tax, there's the 100% marital deduction, so there's no problem. When Mary dies, what happens? She gets all of the assets. It's over one point, uh, it's over a million dollars, so you've got an extra $150,000 that is putting her above a million. So then we're going to calculate the tax on this, and I think in, in the next slide I'll show you more about that. But essentially, the IRS, not the IRS, the DOR has become a beneficiary of the estate. Just like Arthur said in the beginning, you don't want to have a will that leaves property to the government if you can avoid it. And believe it or not, the tax on this estate is $42,000. And that's because, as I said before, you're only going from 1% to 16%, but you're starting at dollar one because it was a threshold and not an exemption. You do not subtract a million dollars and then calculate the tra tax on 150000 You actually calculate the tax on the um, $1,150,000 and then arcanely, you actually subtract 60000 from that and then apply the chart to it. And the 60000 that you subtract goes back to like the mid-70s when that was the exemption amount on the federal level. If you can believe, it used to be 60000 and now we're at $5 million. So things have changed a lot. So if you had been looking at that tax just based on how much you're paying on each one of those dollars that's above a million, you'd only be in about a 6% bracket, but... right. So then if we look at a comparison of the 150000 to the actual tax you're paying, if you were allowed to subtract the million dollars off the top, you'd be in the 28% tax bracket. 
So that's a significant um, issue that people need to look at. And this, this shows you what the actual tax is on the dollar. When she told me that, I said, that's, a, so, that's so amazing. I'd like to know what that dollar is going to cost you, right? Yeah, this is Arthur's slide. He, he wanted to see what a dollar was worth as opposed to the 150000 But basically, because the tax is 33200 on an estate of a million one, if you look at one dollar, that's the tax bracket you're in, which is absurd. Right. So in other words, if you th that dollar costs you thirty three thousand dollars. That's the the reason why when you're when you're close. I mean, I know a lot of people who who like Frank and Mary are like around this number. If you're retired, if you have a house in Holden, if you have a place on the Cape, if you have a little bit of IRA and four hundred one k money, you're looking a lot like a million dollars, even without life insurance policies. One of the things that we, we, a lot of the work that we do for younger people is because they, they, of course, never think of themselves as being worth a million dollars, except all the life insurance counts. So it always puts them over a million dollars. But for, you know, for folks who are just kind of basically like Frank and Mary, the, the, the importance of keeping yourself just below that million dollars as opposed to just above it, you know, you, you really want it, to, it's a classic planning case where you really want to be paying attention. You can plan to save thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. 